Yo, what's up everybody? Falcrest here, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different with the One Piece content. Uh, sitting here doing a little bit of day drinking on a Sunday. Uh, figured it'd be a good time to piss the people off with my One Piece, uh, takes. So we're doing a, uh, One Piece arc tier list, as you can see here. Um, now this list doesn't break them down according to, like, the same way, like, the One Piece wiki and a lot of people see. Because it doesn't have like the post war or the uh, like post uh, in his lobby, which I think though it's kind of dumb to even separate those. They should just be part of their main arc. So I preferred kind of the way this was listed out here. So yeah, um, I I changed the rankings a bit because there was a section for bad. I don't think there's actually like any terrible arcs or anything like that in the series. Uh, this one. Uh, kind of exception to that. So I just, uh, instead of doing like good, bad, great, uh, we're just doing S through D. Um, but just going to go in order here, kind of give my highs and lows of each arc. Uh, and hopefully I don't make everybody too mad here. Uh, so, and w once I place them, I, I'll probably move some around at the end. It's not going to be like their final placement or anything like that. But. Let's go ahead and get started with Alabasta. Um, Alabasta, depending how you look at it, was like the first major, major arc. Uh, Arlong was pretty big, but Alabasta, I feel like, is the f first, like, oh shit, things are super intense arc. Um, high point. Oh, Bonclay. Bonclay's. Fucking great. Love that dude. Um, the introduction of Ace is another really high point. Uh, the Zoro Das Bones fight. Uh, as far as downsides of Alabasta, I feel like a lot of the lower members of the Baroque works are very forgettable. Um, Hell is another glaring fault in the arc even though that doesn't really get explored until cover pages later down the road i feel like in hindsight it rejects well it retracts a lot from the arc um i'm gonna start alabasta in the b tier i feel like it's gonna end up being a high b maybe a low a but for now let's just go ahead and uh get it put in the b tier amazon lily uh Amazon Lily follows up on spoilers, what could be my favorite arc in the series, Sabaody. Um I don't think it's very good in comparison to the rest of a lot of the arcs here. Um it's in the like last chunk right before the time skip, so it's sandwiched with Saba Odi, Impel Down, and Marine Ford, which are some of the best arcs in the entire series. And then, yes, it's important, this arc, Luffy learns the basis of hockey, we get Hancock introduced, which, in my opinion, Hancock's highly overrated. But I feel like the whole thing for Amazon Lily was Oda really wanted to make a dick joke, so he just wrote, like, however many chapters Amazon Lily is, like 15 to 20, something like that. I think, <laughs> I, I, I might get some hate for that, I don't even know what the general consensus on Amazon Lily is. But for me, it's it's down there. Okay, bringing us to Arlong Park. Arlong, this Arlong Park is the first. I, I don't want to say glimpse of greatness, but it's the first time in the series, uh, the scene where Nami asks Luffy for help. He takes off the straw hat and puts it on her. That is, in my when I was reading and watching, that was the first time I was kind of blown away and thought that this series could be something truly special. Uh, so that's that moment does a lot for me there. Uh, Luffy versus Arlong is a really cool fight. Um, I like Arlong as a villain. Um, downside is... Um, I, I can't even remember the dude that Zoro... Uh, not Zoro, the... Uh, Sanji fights against the dude that spits. 
I can't even tell you his name. I don't even remember him. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty solid arc. I'm, I'm debating low A or high B. This might make people mad, but I think it's better than Alabasta, probably. Uh, Baratie. Mihawk carries this arc so fucking hard. Um, Don Krieg is probably the worst villain in the series, if not the second worst next to Cody Jones. Um, Don Krieg sucks. Um, this arc is heavily carried by the arrival of Mihawk and his little showdown with Zoro, if you can even call it that. He downed a dude with a butter knife. Uh, and then also the Zeph Sanji flashback. Um, the villains in this arc, they are all bad. Pearl or whatever his name was, he sucked. Don Krieg is just terrible. Uh, I'm going to throw this in C tier. I feel like it's going to be a low C, because even though it kind of pops off in certain portions, it's actually one of my like least favorite of the East Blue area. All right, Dress Rosa. A lot of people hate Undress Rosa, uh, saying it's dragged on for too long. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see how that opinion will change in the community now that Wano has passed it up and then we're only in Act 2 when there's going to be at least three acts. So I feel like the hatred of it being a long arc isn't really deserved. Yeah, it did drag on during the birdcage. Birdcage was the definite low point of the series. Well, not, not the series, of the arc. Uh, but overall, I feel like Dressrosa is just an approved version of Alabasta. Uh, we get so many reveals. Uh, Sabo coming back, him getting the Mara Mara no Mi, the Grand Fleet, the introduction of all of them. Bartolomeo's fantastic. I love that dude. Do Flamingo, up to this point, might be the best. Well, up to Dressrosa is probably the best villain of the series. You can argue Rob Lucci, but I feel like Rob Lucci is more just a dude doing his job, where Dofi is just a full blown asshole. Uh, I'm going to throw an A. I feel like it being above these two is going to get me some flack. But I really feel like it's just a straight improvement of Alabasta. They have very similar structure. Um, but yeah. Let's move on. Drum Island is the first arc in this series that made me cry. Um, Chopper, the flashback, the cherry blossoms, everything. Chopper, even though I hate kind of what he's become post time skip, being able to control Monster Point, uh, kind of losing that oomph that he once had, Drum Island has a very, very soft spot in my heart. I love Drum Island a lot. It's my favorite of the kind of intro arcs. Um, it's very good. Walpole is a shitty villain, but at least he's like. A funny shitty villain, unlike Don Krieg, who just sucked overall. Like, he was pretty shit. Uh, drum, who? Oh. This is hard right here. I, I love Drum Island a lot. Do I love it more than Arl? I, it's, I like it more than Alabasta for sure. I'm kind of debating over Arlong. But let's throw it right here for now. Uh, we can always come back to it later. But I feel like it's a very well put together kind of self-contained arc. Enos Lobby, the, there's no debate. It's one of the best arcs of the series, of any series. Uh, it is just nonstop. Everybody just flexing, doing their best to bring back Robin. Uh, we finally get to see Robin's true side, the... Not the cold-blooded assassin she was kind of made out to be. Um, the demon child, that flashback, Derry Shishi. It's just so good. Not to mention just like everybody's one-on-one -on -one fights are incredible. Uh, some of the best fights in the series. Uh, Monster Point for the first time. Gear second and third. It's just insane. I don't think there's anybody that is a One Piece fan that can put this up below like the top five arcs at minimum.
Ah. Okay, then perfect segue here. Get out of here, Telegram. Uh, let me close that down real quick. <laughs> Alright. Uh, we have Fishman Island, which is the worst of the large arcs in this series. Um, Horty Jones is a terrible villain. How are you, how are you going to be a fishman and lose to Zoro underwater? like, 20 chapters into the arc, and then it still goes on for, like, another 30-ish chapters. Um, it's... It... Tr he tries to be Arlong. He's just a shitty version of Arlong that relies on steroids. Uh, Shirahoshi is one of the worst characters in the series. Uh, her brothers aren't much better. King Neptune's cool. Uh, nice seeing Kami and Jinbei, stuff like that. It introduces Big Mom. Uh, well, like, formally introduced Big Mom. She was mentioned beforehand. But I just don't think it's a very good arc. The villains are all pretty bad. Uh, they only exist for the Star Hats to kind of flex their post-time skip power-ups. But, like, I don't know. I feel like Luffy punching the arc was more of a fight than any of the fights that took place within the actual arc itself. Um... Yeah, I'm, it's probably my least favorite arc of the series. It's a long arc with not a whole lot to do. Uh, the Fisher Tiger flashback was pretty good. Um, yeah, let's move on here. Impel Down. Um, Impel Down is pretty freaking good. Um, introduces uh, Ivankov. Ah. Great character there. Um, Magellan <laughs> is a really good blend of comedy and power. Um, his diarrhea is... It still makes me laugh every time I fucking see him talking about eating poison soup. Um, there's a lot of good comedy within the arc, even though it's a like, really, really serious arc with a lot of stuff on the line. Um, we get Buggy coming back better than ever. Uh, a lot of the villains coming back and kind of improved in my opinion. They actually get a chance to show off personality as opposed to when they were the villains in their individual arcs. They were kind of just like, oh, I'm the bad guy. So they we didn't really see that other side of them. Um, lots of stuff as far as Blackbeard. Uh, him getting a crew. Oh, an even bigger crew. A deadlier crew with that. Um... It's a really good arc. Ooh. Um, I think I'm going to put it... Is it better than Dress... It, it's probably better than Dress Rosa, but we can return to that. Jaya. I, I'm, I'm probably in the minority here saying I love Jaya, but... Mostly because I, I like Bellamy for some reason. A lot of people just shit on Bellamy like he's cannon fodder. But I really like Bellamy as a character. I just wish that he would join either the Grand Fleet or Law's crew or something like that. Uh, my dream is for Law to start recruiting all the like semi-villains throughout the series. So him getting like Bellamy and Caesar, stuff like that, that'd be great for me. Uh, Jaya is really... I like it a lot. Uh, the intro of Blackbeard. Um... I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, the like mention of Shanks and Whitebeard. Well, it's the first sign of Whitebeard, I believe. Um, they're talking about the meeting with Shanks upcoming, everything like that. It sets the groundwork for a lot within the series, uh, and also leads into uh, Sky PA, which is just world building, lore drop. And that's the stuff I live for when it comes to One Piece. Um. Hi B? Hi B? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Little Garden. It's got some good comedy. Um, I like Mr. Three as a character for some reason. Um, his wax powers are cool. This arc has some really, really good comedy in it. When Zoro is just posing with his sword out when they're all getting turned into the giant candle. It's... Really good stuff there, but as a whole, I'd say uh, high C tier. 
Um, there's not a whole, whole bunch there. It's kind of just a stepping stone to bigger arcs. But it's got some good moments. Okay. Logetown. Uh, last stop before the Grand Line. Uh, Doro flexes and gets some cursed sword. Uh, Dragon shows up, but we don't really get the uh, the full oomph of that until later on. Um, <laughs> Luffy almost gets executed. It's it's an arc. <laughs> um, I enjoy it. There's good moments, but it's just another one of them that is just kind of a a stepping stone. Um, them entering into the Grand Line. I'm not sure if that's considered Log Town or uh, Reverse Mountain, but it's good stuff. Ah. Long Ring, Long Land. Um, a lot of people hate this art because it's like strictly comedy. Uh, I like it. The ending of it absolutely pops off when Alkaji shows up and kind of just shits on everybody. Uh, it's not bad. I enjoy it. I feel like Foxy is going to turn up one way or another at some point in the series. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what all that will quite entail. I could see him being fodder for a Blackbeard to get some good devil fruit for a crewmate or something like that. But yeah. <laughs> I think Yep, I think it's kind of mid C. Got better comedy than Little Garden. Um, even just that one little fight scene at the end with Alkaji is better than anything that happens in these arcs down here. Uh, Marine Ford, come on. It, when you have a gathering of all of the fucking goats, it's going to be a goat arc. That's just how it works. It's simple math. Uh, literally everything happens in this arc. Like, so much shit pops off. The consequences of this arc are huge. Uh, it completely sets the landscape for the second half of the series. It's fantastic. S tier might be the best arc of the series. It's ridiculous. Uh, Orange Town. We got Buggy. <laughs> what what else can you really say? Um. As far as the, like, East Blue arcs, I don't feel like it's all that great. Um, you know what? Saying that, I'm gonna bring Brody in. Ah! No. Brody in gets it just gets carried by the Zeph flashback and Mihawk, which that puts it above anything that happens in Orange Town. Orange Town, it's kind of just your basic beginning of the series. Here's Buggy, who isn't even a threatening villain, but the Straw Hats are just young bucks at this point, so they still kind of struggle a bit. Hunk Hazard, it's kind of hit and miss with me. Uh, the setup is really cool, the whole of them going to the island where Aokiji and Akainu fought. Um, yeah. Uh, it has Law in it, so that's a giant plus. Law is my favorite character in the series. Uh, has the Law slicing Virgo along with like half the island. Um, I think it's probably mid B tier. Um, yeah, it, it, there's just like a lot of weird stuff that didn't really need to happen in the arc. Uh, I like Caesar as a character, weirdly enough. Um, all the lackeys that show up, like Buffalo, I could really do without. Uh, Baby Five, I like her. But uh, the whole smiley nonsense, I, meh. Uh, Reverie, it is just a little short bundle of nonstop 10 out of 10 arcs. Uh, I struggle to put it as like the best arc just because due to the length, but I feel like pound for pound if you took all the chapters of Reverie and compared the best chapters of like any other arc, it would definitely hold up if not being the best. Each chapter is just bomb drop after bomb drop. Uh, it, 
is insane that we got that as a, a, a little segue during Wano. It is ridiculous. Uh, Reverse Mountain is a lot better when you have the context of Thriller Bark. Um, obviously, Laboon. It, it, it hits the feels. Um, the whole VV nonsense. I could... Meh. It's whatever. Um, man. The arc itself, I don't feel like, is that great. I just really love Laboon. So, it's hard for me to rank this. Uh, going, I think I'm going to D tier. High D tier, but still D tier. Um, you know what? I'm swapping Baratier and Logar. The more I think about, about Baratier, that is that flashback, and then Mihawk, it's so good. I don't care that Don Creek sucks ass. It's There's just some good stuff in there. Romance Dawn, we get we get the whole Shanks losing an arm, Luffy getting the straw hat, yada yada yada. That part's great. Uh, what's not so great is uh, Helmepo, uh, Morgan, that kind of nonsense. Uh, I feel like it's relatively well. Like obviously, it's the first arc of this series, so it's going to be weak comparatively. But compared to the other Straw Hat introduction arcs, I count Romance on kind of being the main introduction of Zoro and Luffy. But comparatively, like, I don't think it's that great. Um, Zoro's intro is kind of weak. Uh, Luffy kind of just busts out of a barrel and deals with Alvita, which is a really annoying character in my eyes. So yeah, we'll go ahead and drop it in D. Uh, Sabori. Uh, I really, really like Saba Odi. I actually am going to put it above Venus Lobby for me. Um, introduction of the Supernovas. Introduction of my favorite uh, Admiral. Uh, just introduction of Rayleigh. Pacifistas. We get the Celestial Dragon Punch, which is one of my favorite moments of the entire series. It is just a really, really good arc. We get the ultimate sense of dread at the end of the arc when uh, Uma just swats everybody away. We see the Straw Hats just ultimately defeated, uh, which, of course, leads to the time skip, them realizing that they aren't ready for kind of the what they've started uh, throughout the series up to this point, and that they need to become stronger. It is just a great, relatively small arc, with such different varying emotions. You get the whole Duval nonsense, which is just really funny. Uh, you get just the anger from the whole Celestial Dragon slave auction nonsense. The dread of seeing everybody get teleported away, not knowing what's going to happen. It is amongst the best arcs. It's probably my personal favorite, but I can definitely see where any of these top three could be anybody's number one. Uh, then we got Skypie. Uh, such, such an important arc. I don't know why people skip it. It does so much for the world building and lore, which that is like the best part about One Piece for me personally. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I, it, it's more of a world building shonen as opposed to like a battle shonen, like My Hero or something like that. Like, it's all about lore when it comes to One Piece. Guy Island brings that lore and then some. Uh, also has a great villain. Uh, Kenaru is fantastic. Uh, it's unfortunate that Luffy had the rubber fruit. Because, man, he was a good character. And if Oda is really trying to end the series in the next five years, I know he says that every year, but if he really is, then... If I, I'm kind of doubting if we're going to see Iteru again, if Oda is trying to wrap stuff up. Uh, go ahead. A tier, above drum. I think Impel Down and Dressrosa are probably better. 
Uh, Syrup Village, weirdly enough for me, is one of my favorite of the East Blues. I know a lot of people hate this arc. Captain Kuro, I like. He's just a dude with a retirement plan. Uh, Django is kind of weird, but I like that weirdness. Um, you get the going Mary. I I think it's probably the high C tier. I like Tier Village quite a bit for some reason. Uh, and I'm not even a big Usopp fan. Usopp is like in the bottom half of the Straw Hats for me. But I feel like he had a very, very solid intro arc. Uh, which brings us to Thriller Bark. Um, giving us Brooke, who's my second favorite Straw Hat. Uh, the Zoro versus Ryuma fight, which is fantastic. Obviously, the ending with the whole uh, Zoro Kuma interaction is absolutely fantastic. One of Zoro's best moments in the series. I feel like this arc is incredible for a few Straw Hats. Uh, Zoro. Uh, being the shining example. Usopp versus Perona is one of my fa it it probably is my favorite Usopp moment in the series. Uh pulling the I'm always angry but he's always negative. Um it's got really good comedy in it, like when they when the boys combine to do their little mech and Robin's just like I I'm embarrassed as a human being. This arc has some of the best comedy in the series. Luffy pushing the zombie back in. It's really good. But also... I really, really dislike the whole Shadow Luffy ass pull at the end. Um, I don't like when characters receive temporary power-ups like that. If you're, if you're going to bust out a power-up that solves the arc's issue, it should be something that was like trained with or earned. Not just take all of our shadows. Uh, that is like the big glaring issue of the arc for me. But even with that being said, it has su such good comedy and action. Uh, has some of the best moments of the series. I I can't stress enough how good that the ending is with Zoro and Kuma. Ah, uh, how about B? You know what? I'm gonna swap those two actually. Water 7, I I dislike, in my mind, Water 7 and Ian's Lobby are just one big arc. Uh, I mean, in retrospect, it wouldn't even be the biggest arc of One Piece if you combine the two. But Water 7, I don't feel is as good as Ina's Lobby. Uh, but we get some incredible moments. The Usopp versus Luffy fight. Uh, the news of Mary kind of breaking down uh, introduction of Frankie, a.k.a. Best Boy. Uh, the whole uh, Luchi Kaku, the reveal of the uh, the woodworks being uh, CP9. That was very, very good. Um, the Tom flashback is one of my favorite flashbacks in the series. Tom is an incredible character. Um, yeah, I still think it's in the S tier, even if you think of it separately of Ina's Lobby. Just really, really good stuff. Whole Cake. Whole Cake is a rough arc for me. Um, it does a lot of cool stuff. I'm glad we got to get the whole Vince Smokes. Reiju is fantastic. The rest of them are kind of pricks. Um, but just... Sanji lore in general is nice. I used to be a big Sanji fanboy until the time skip hit, and then it kind of went all downhill. But this arc did not help that at all. It was promised as the year of Sanji, year of Sanji. But Sanji basically did nothing in this arc besides get shit on. Um, Katakuri, I feel, carries this arc heavily. Katakuri is my favorite villain, even though I don't really see him as like a true villain is more of just a dude that has strong family ties who happens to have a shitty mom. Um, there's some really, really good moments. The Luffy Katakuri fight is arguably one of the best of the series. Um, the woods, running through the woods there and back, that I found that really annoying. 
Um, there's some cool stuff towards the end of the arc with them trying to fight off Big Mom and escape. I don't feel like this is one of Oda's like best arcs, but I feel like so much good happens in this arc. It kind of counteracts it a bit here. Um, Whole Cake's a difficult one for me. I am a Curry fanboy. He's top three characters in the series for me. He's fantastic. But let's see here. I'm I'm gonna come back to Whole Cake. Is that one I need I need to process in the back of my mind. Uh Whiskey Peak? Not very good. <laughs> I I Zoro fighting the like hundred bounty hunters or whatever it was, that was cool. But I think Whiskey Peak is just a very kind of uninteresting arc. It doesn't have a lot of the quirkiness of a lot of the other, well, most of the series, other than a dude flinging explosive boogers. Uh, specifically, Lenny Kravitz throwing his explosive boogers. But, I mean, eh, I feel like Romance Dawn, Orange Town, and Whiskey Peak are all kind of just interchangeable for me. They're all kind of just whatever. Okay, so we get the Minks, which is a good and bad thing. Sorry, Carrot fans, but I'm going to be very upset if she's the next Straw Hat. Um, but the whole Jack situation, uh, Nekomamushi and Inarashi, um, that flashback is incredible. Uh, the whole Raizo is here thing was great. Really, really good stuff. Ah, it's going in B tier. I'm just struggling where to actually put it in B tier. Probably going to get shit for this, but it's going to go right there. Uh, I think Reverse Mountain can actually, like, move up. No, this still belongs down there. Never mind, I like. Whole Cake. Man. There's so much good, but there's also so much bad. I struggled. It's definitely not S tier. If it's going to be A tier, it's going to be very low A tier. I'm thinking I'm going to make an executive decision. Bump Drum Island back up here. Full Cake, I feel, is like in the middle. Let's just go ahead, take a look here, see if there's any last minute changes for me. Um, I feel like S tier, it's nice. I, I don't really think any of those should be moving anywhere. Um, Press Rosa. Birdcage kind of fucks with it. But it's an insane arc overall. I think it deserves A tier. Oh, I think A tier is looking pretty solid. B... Put Alabasta above Punk Hazard. Thinking back, I think Punk Hazard's kind of just meh. So I think low B is kind of... It's decent there. Ah, that was better than Punk Hazard. <laughs> just... Yeah, no. That was definitely better than Punk Hazard. Uh, Syrup Village is solid. I think that looks pretty good. D tier. Fishman Island is definitely my least favorite. Amazon Lily is definitely my second least favorite. Uh, Romance Dawn, Orange Town, and Whiskey Peak are basically interchangeable. Um, I... Yeah, I think this is probably pretty solid. Alright. So this is my pre Wano <laughs> tier list here. Um... If I were to throw in Wano, it would probably be high A tier at this point, but we still have a shit ton of Wano left. I assume by the end of it, it's going to be up there with a, uh, I mean S tier. Um, shit is shaping up to be a really, really good arc. Um, so yeah, let me know if you agree or disagree, or just completely shit on my take. Uh, yeah, drop that in the comments. Thanks for watching. Peace!